let us begin our discussion today with one of the very important topic in the cardiology is ECG. ECG actually records the effect of action potential but it does not actually records the action potential itself. ECG leads are totally 12. So there are totally 12 ECG leads which are unipolar as well as bipolar leads. So unipolar leads are the one which measures the voltage at one locus relative to the electrode which is called Wilson Central Terminal. Among 9 unipolar leads, 6 are chest leads V1 to V6 and 3 are augmented leads AVL, AVR as well as AVF. And next are the bipolar leads. Bipolar leads measures the potential difference between electrodes at two extremities that is 1, 2 as well as 3. And the lead AVR is placed opposite of other leads and is often ignored that is called as the forgotten 12th lead. Normal axis of ECG in adult male is minus 30 to plus 110. So first let us talk about the high lateral one. The first one is called a high lateral, second is inferior and the third is also inferior. So the high lateral if you see has AVR, V1 anteroceptal and V4 anterior and the 2, lead 2 is inferior, AVL high lateral, V2 anteroceptal and V5 low lateral and the third one that is inferior, the third lead, AVF inferior, V3 anterior and V6 low lateral and mainly to detect lead misplacement, AVR plus AVL plus AVF is equal to 0 or we can say 6 mm plus 2 mm minus 8 mm is equal to 0. This is the formula. Now let us talk about normal ECG waves. So P wave is called as atrial depolarization and after that the interval is present called as PR interval. The normal PR interval is 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. What is PR interval? The time taken by the action potential to travel from SA node to the AV node that is final part of the AV node not the initial part of the AV node. The time taken by the action potential from SA node to the AV node is called as PR interval and it is between 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. And if the PR interval is greater than 0.20 second, it is called as first degree hard block or AV nodal delay. And after PR interval, next what you can see in the ECG is called as a QRS complex. In the QRS complex, you have Q wave, R wave as well as S wave. The Q wave is because of depolarization of basal portion of the interventricular septum. And the R wave is because of depolarization of the apical portion of interventricular septum as well as the apical portion of ventricular musculature. Because of the apical portion of ventricular musculature is very thick and maximum when compared to that of the basal part, the amplitude what you can see in the ECG is very high represented as R wave. There is a reason R wave is called as depolarization of the apical portion of the ventricular muscle as well as apical portion of the interventricular septum. And uh, what is the QRS complex? The total QRS complex is very rapid that is 0.1 second and it represents ventricular depolarization. QRS complex means entire ventricular depolarization. So after QRS complex next is called as QT interval. QT interval refers the total mechanical contraction of ventricles and the duration is 0.4 seconds. And next is ST segment. ST segment duration is 0.3 seconds and it refers to that of ventricular contraction. And the T wave is the ventricular repolarization. 
and uh, it is mainly because of potassium and U wave at last is mainly seen in hypokalemia as well as bradycardia. So these are the ECG waves as well as intervals. And what is the clinical significance of these waves? So P wave size is actually increased in right atrial enlargement if it is like greater than 2.5 mm. So this is how you can identify increase in the size of the P wave, loss of P wave. You can clearly say that there is a problem in the atrial depolarization. If there is an atrial enlargement, the size of the P wave increases. In the atrial hypertrophy, there will be tall P waves. In the same way, if the atria is not contracting at all in the conditions like atrial fibrillation, P wave is absent. So like that, you need to identify the abnormalities in the ECG by means of what are the changes structurally as well as functionally what we can see in the chambers of the heart. Next is the ventricular depolarization starts from left part of the interventricular septum. Even that you can identify through the ECG because the mass UQRS complex is associated with the pompous disease. Pompous disease we know that it is a glycogen storage disease associated with the cardiomegaly so which in turn causes uh, a prolonged QRS complex. So prolonged QRS complex can be seen in majority of the conditions where there will be too much delay in the ventricular depolarization. In the same way, if you see low QRS voltages, it may be because of ventricle is not contracting properly. That may be seen in pericardial effusion, cardiac amyloidosis or also with left ventricular hypertrophy or ventricular failure where you can see low QRS voltages. In the same way, the QT interval is the one a component varies with the heart rate and the vagal stimulation of the heart causes increase mainly in the RR interval what you can see in the ECG. So decrease in the RR interval which means uh, increase in the heart rate and increase in the duration of the RR interval which means decrease in the heart rate. So RR interval is the one which actually determines heart rate. There's a reason in the ventricular tachycardia, what you need to see are the R waves which are approximated to each other. In the same way, in the bradycardia, the RR waves are like far from each other. And the J point is the junction between QRS as well as ST and you can see J wave which is called as Osborne wave which is mainly seen in hypothermia. ST elevation, if we talk about ST elevation, which means you need to see in different leads. For example, ST elevation in the leads 2, 3, as well as AVF is seen mainly in inferior wall myocardial infarction. In the same way, ST elevation in the lead 1, AVL, is seen mainly in the lateral wall myocardial infarction. Like that, if the ST elevation in the chest leads that is V3 to V6 referred to as anterolateral wall MI. So this is how you can see ST elevation refers to that of uh, myocardial infarction at a specific locus of the heart. Next is torsidus D pontus. Torsidus D pontus is a ventricular tachycardia which is mainly characterized by shifting sinusoidal waveforms on ECG. If it is left untreated, it can progress to the ventricular fibrillation which is fatal. The drugs that can prolong QT interval can predispose to the condition called as torsidus D pointus and congenital long QT syndrome such as Jervil and uh, Lange-Nielsen syndrome are the most often mainly due to defects in sodium as well as potassium channels can also cause torsidus D pontus. Next is the atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is atrial arrhythmia where you can see irregularly irregular pulse and because of atrial fibrillation Atria is not contracting at all, 
because of the fibrillatory waves what you can see in the atria there's a reason p waves are absent in the ecg in the same way a wave is also absent in the jvp a wave is absent in the jvp p wave is absent in the ecg or the classical feature of atrial fibrillation so there are no discrete p waves in between irregularly uh, spaced qrs complexes and because of atria is not contracting properly and there is a acoustic atrial like contraction because of this what happens is there is a stasis of the blood in the atria the stasis of the blood in the atria during atrial fibrillation leads to the formation of thrombus and this thrombus may like uh, embolize and may cause like uh, a life threatening thromboembolism which is one of the most common complication what we will see in the atrial fibrillation in the atrial fibrillation the atrial rate is generally approximately greater than 350 per minute and it may be sometimes up to 600 beats per minute also and after atrial fibrillation next is called as a atrial flutter what is the difference between atrial fibrillation as well as atrial flutter in atrial fibrillation the atrial rate is greater than 350 but in atrial flutter the atrial rate is not greater than 350 it is approximately between 250 to 350 generally it never like exceeds greater than 350 generally whenever it exceeds greater than 350 to 400 it leads to atrial fibrillation but not the flutter so there's a reason because of uh, atrial rate is approximately between 250 to 350 beats per minute you will see multiple p waves which can appear as short toothed p waves in the ecg so short tooth appearance of p waves in the ecg is a classical marker the way we can identify that it is atrial flutter next is the atrioventricular block atrioventricular block is also called as av block and it has categorized or divided into three types first degree second degree as well as third degree so what is the first degree heart block prolonged pr interval is called as first degree heart block we know normal pr interval is 0.12 to 0.20 seconds whenever the pr interval is greater than 0.20 it is called as first degree heart block and majority of the cases it is asymptomatic in nature next is called as a second degree heart block and second degree heart block is further divided into morbid type 1 and morbid type 2 in morbid type 1 there is a progressive lengthening of the pr interval you can see the pr interval in the first wave and second wave and third wave there is a progressive increase in the length of the pr interval and suddenly what happens is there is a skip beat so there is a progressive lengthening of the pr interval until a beat is dropped that is p wave not followed by the qrs complex this is called as morbid type 1 of second degree heart block and what is morbid type 2 in morbid type 2 the dropped beats that is missed qrs complexes are not preceded by change in the length of the pr interval that is the classic difference between morbid type 1 and the morbid type 2 and after second degree heart block next is called as a third degree heart block in the third degree heart block the impulses which are generated by the atria not reaching ventricles at all which means atria is contracting on its own and the ventricle contracting on its own you may get it out why ventricle is contracting if the impulses are not even reaching the ventricles yes atria is contracting because of it has a pacemaker called as sa node and ventricle is contracting maybe because of av node or bundle of us or maybe because of parkinji fibers because any part of the conduction system can start generating impulse if sa node is not working so in the third degree heart block atria contracts because of sa node and ventricle is contracting because of av node is generating impulse so atrial rate is higher when compared to that of the ventricular rate because the ventricular rate is mainly due to av node and not because of the sa node so there's a reason the ventricular rate will be dropped mainly in the third degree heart block but in general what how we define third degree heart block is atria as well as ventricle beat independently of each other and here 
both P waves and QRS complexes are present because atria is contracting, there is a P wave, ventricle is contracting and there will be a QRS complexes in the ECG. You can see P wave as well as QRS complexes in the ECG, they are present. But remember, P waves bear no resemblance to that of the QRS complexes. This is called as a third degree heart block. And this one is mainly treated by the placement of the pacemaker. And at last, let us discuss what is the ventricular fibrillation. Everyone will pray that uh, they don't want to get this condition called as ventricular fibrillation because more than 90 to 95 percent of the cases patient die because of ventricular fibrillation and it is a completely erratic ventricular rhythm and there is no proper waves which can be identified in the ECG and it is a fatal condition and it needs immediate defibrillation. So this is what is about uh, various electrical abnormalities what you can see in the heart.